Um, so I just wanted to, I'm going to start by saying that um, if you guys have any questions or comments, um, please share them. We love them. Um, especially because I like to, you know, this is a topic that we're talking about reports, so it can be more of a personable thing. Um, so like what your own little maybe quirks that you add to your reports are. Sometimes that's fun to know. Um, and we're kind of going to just sort of share what our formats are and um, what, you know, we think is sort of pertinent to to the, the report itself and the different types that we've that we've come across in our travels, sometimes literally. Um, <laughs> you're welcome, Ingrid. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start with the share screen of this is, um, these are the reports that I use and kind of how I do mine. Um, this is a rehearsal report for me. This is a, a Midsummer Night's Dream, which I basically just start with a schedule and the next day's, uh, the day of's call and the next day's call. Um, and then I'll copy and paste the call into what I'm sending to the actors as well. Um, and then I just add the different departments and some general stuff. Lizzie, that's not actually a third page, I swear. <laughs> um, but yeah, just basic things that, you know, we, we ask of the departments. Um, again, this is a rehearsal report, so there's no, um, I don't, I didn't have to add any injuries on this one. Um, for this show, I did have to add a couple of them during performance, not for rehearsals, though. Um, and again, this is a Midsummer Night's Dream where it was a Shakespeare in the Park last year, last summer in Brantford, Connecticut. And um, there was a bit of a raked, raked stage and a double level stage. Um, and it was a metal deck with just masonite across it. So it, it made for some interesting situations. But yeah, this is my basic um, rehearsal report. And then as for a performance report, this is for, it's similar. Um, it kind of just switches from where the today's show is uh, in my performance report. That's where the schedule used to be. Um, and then again, the next call is, is next to it. And that would be something that I would send to the actors as well. Um, this show, everybody was called at the same time. It was, only, it was three actors. It was a pretty small show. Um, this was the one uh, show that we had um, a prop gun for. So that was certain things. I, we didn't have um, issues with the gun itself. It was a sound effect at one point that um, I had problems with, but um, that's in a different report. Um, so lights and sound, I'll, I will tailor my report to the performance. Um, my light and sound person were the same person for this. So I truncated the um, column or the, the box for that. I didn't give them separate boxes. Whereas for Midsummer, I had separate things for them. Um, for this, my, my light and set person were different, but I kept it separate just so that the director was able to read it a bit easier. Um, and this was a fairly light show, dare I say, um, where for the most part, um, costumes, it was the actor's costumes. This was a, uh, or the actor's clothing rather. It was a um, festival show. So they provided their own um, props were brought by the director pretty much. Uh, and he was there at every performance. Um, so he was taking his own notes and, and such. Um, general notes, that would be something like, you know, I, may, I might include some type of audience notes, you know, cell phone rang. Um, maybe the temperature would go in there. Uh, and anything that is not pertinent specifically to a department. Um, and then this other report that I've got here I uh, don't want to pause, resume the share. Here. Uh, here, we're gonna go back. 
this is another report that I have um, that was actually provided for me. This is a, sort of an instance where the producer, um, this is the paperwork that they like. So that's what they give us. Um, and I'm fine with that. I have no problem using a company's paperwork um, for this at least. Certain things I, I, I'm not really gonna give on, but a report, if they're used to seeing it a certain way, I'm okay with that. Um, and this particular project is for a, a reading. It's a one day thing anyway. Um, so he's not, it's not something that's, that's usually remounted uh, later. Every once in a while he does, but these are um, usually just one-offs. And um, yeah, it has the just basic information that, that he wants um, from you. And I may add a couple of things if I need to also. Um, as you can see, it's sent to us uh, via Dropbox as a Word document and then uh, the stage manager for that reading, if they, they, they'll do their editing in, in Word and then if they want to, they can send it off as a PDF. I send it off as a PDF because um, then it, it can't be changed. Um, yeah, and those are my, again, that last one was one that was given to me, um, but the, the, the ones that I showed you before, those are my general notes, uh, my reports. And I haven't really changed it much um, in the last couple of years. I will change mine every once in a while if I get bored with my own layout or if I see somebody else's that I like better, I may ask if I can you know, sort of adapt it um, for myself. Uh, but that being said, I do think you should ask first. <laughs> um, don't just steal somebody's work. Um, that's mean. But I think, uh, yeah, Lisa, you've got a next little bit of, of stuff for us too. Yeah. See your, how you like to do it. Yeah. I'm, so I'm going to pop up a rehearsal report from a show I did back earlier this year. And um, bear with me because I'm playing with a new computer today. <laughs> So I'm um, screen sharing um, in a new way. So let's see if this actually works like it did earlier. We'll figure this out. Um, I, I will freely admit that my rehearsal report comes from um, an off-Broadway stage manager that I worked with who was like, hey, you are welcome to bar this. And I was like, great. Um, so I did. And now my computer doesn't want to do what I wanted to do. There we go. Um, and so as Taylor was alluding to, you can easily, there are pe most people will share and are happy with that. There we go. So this is my rehearsal report uh, for the last show I did um, earlier this year. And I will Um, I always have a logo. If there's a logo available, I do try to put that up there because it's colorful and people go, oh, yeah, I know what this is. Um, uh, I have a couple things that are probably different than what I was just seeing with Taylor's. And, and like I said, everybody personalizes their reports however they want to. Um, so formatting, you may look at somebody else's report and say that format doesn't work for me. Like visually, it's confusing or visually it doesn't make sense to me. Um, so if you're not asked by a specific director or works for you. Um, I separate my late and absent cast and crew so I can see those differently. Um, I am a stickler about time as most of us are. Uh, if you'll look, I'll notice here that one of my actresses was late that day. If there's a specific reason they texted me, my train is stalled, um, et cetera, then I'm gonna put that in parentheses so I know what that is, but that day she did not let me know that. Um, schedule changes, rehearsal notes. Um, I will always use none today. I, I noticed that Taylor uses, I think, uh, nothing at this time. So however you want to phrase it, uh, that's fine. So that your individual designers, et cetera, know that they don't have any notes for that particular day. Um, on this particular day, we actually had a production meeting prior to rehearsal. So if you look under set and lights, you'll see that it says notes were given at production meeting. That's just a little reminder. Hey, we had discussed some things uh, at the meeting. Re please refer back to those. Um, 
we have a fight choreographer that was coming in to work two days from this particular rehearsal because this rehearsal took place on January 29th and the choreographer was coming in on the 31st. So I normally have that in the schedule changes and updates above rehearsal notes, but also in the fight choreography section. So it's a reminder in two places. Um, and then I'm gonna scroll down to the second. It's only two pages, Lizzie, I promise. Um, costume fittings. Uh, we had a little bit of an unusual situation. We were rehearsing in a different space than where we had space to do costume fittings. So uh, under costumes, one of our actors had a fitting coming up and you'll notice that I put in an estimated arrival at the space so that they could account for that travel time and the costume designer knew when to expect that actor. And I also knew when I needed to get that actor out of rehearsal to be able to have the time to travel. Um, we were using a black garment bag that had been a request that day to reveal a sundress that was used in uh, one of the first scenes of the show. One of the actresses had one, I knew I had one, so it's not only in the costume notes to let the, the costumer know this is what we're going to try, but it's a note in the stage management, management to remind me to bring said garment bag. Um, my injuries are separate. I have a steadfast rule that I always tell my actors day one uh, at meet and greet. I never want to change the words none today in my injury report. That's my always my goal. <laughs> So uh, that's just an example of a rehearsal report for me. The other reports that I'm gonna show you today are uh, equity reports. So there are certain reports that equity request that you must fill out, uh, such as this particular form, which is called the pre-production safety information sheet, or as most of us like to refer to it, the pre-pro sheet. Uh, company information is at the top. So where are you performing? What is the show? What are your dates of first rehearsal, your first tech rehearsal, your first public performance, and when you open? So all of that information Equity has to be able to, for example, be at your first rehearsal. Um, I know these forms are becoming even more important because now, as of January, we have a new person or persons at Equity called a field representative or a field rep uh, they just started rolling that out before everything shut down. And those field reps are taking these pre-production forms, looking at what you're doing, and then going into your rehearsal, usually the first rehearsal, and then somewhere at the beginning of tech to make sure that all of this lines up and that everything is safe as, as it should be. So the second part of this form is the production elements. So what are you doing that could potentially be hazardous? Uh, and you mark yes or no. Uh, so for us, for example, the second one down, stage smoke haze effects. There are very specific requirements for what you can and cannot use in terms of smoke and haze with a production. We were planning to use haze in our production so that box is checked yes. Equity is familiar with that. They then let us know what, in terms of the space we can and cannot use. Uh, and then actually when we tested it, it didn't work the way we wanted it to. We called Equity back and said, we're not using this anymore. And they were like, great, thanks. And they were aware that we had taken that out of what we were doing. Uh, we also had stage combat, so that is marked yes. So they're aware that we uh, have that combat and they can come in and take a look at that if they choose to make sure that that is being run safely and smoothly. Uh, other items such as stunts, uh, inclined playing surfaces, uh, um, and et cetera, moving scenery, et cetera. And then of course it is signed by the production stage manager and your producers. So this form is filled out during your prep week and sent in to equity. And then my understanding from uh, talking to one of the new field reps is that particularly outside of the uh, city, uh, the office cities, New York, Chicago, LA, that the field representatives will take these forms and go out to the theaters, regional theaters mostly, but they can use these here in the office cities as well, like New York, and make sure that, oh, I see you have smoke and haze. What type of fog machine, haze machine are you using? What chemical are you using in that machine to make sure that it is appropriate? Um, they can look at your stage combat, for example. It may be that you marked no and you didn't call them and tell them later that you were gonna have a fire and pyrotechnic effect they come into your rehearsal and they see it and they're like, whoa, uh, that's not on your form. Let's make sure that this is um, safe for everyone involved and that you've let the fire marshal know and that you have a fire guard, et cetera. 
So that's what this form is for. And as I said, it's filled out in pre-production and sent to equity. The last form I'm gonna show you, which is also an equity form, is the equity injury report. It's a lovely report, it even tells you where to submit it. I love that about this report. So you have your, uh, your email there, it's submitted weekly to equity, whether you have injuries or not. Uh, if you have an injury, you have the date of the injury, uh, the number or the scene that you, the injury happened in, the actor's equity name, which is very important. A lot of actors have a, an, a name with equity that may be different from a name they use in rehearsal um, because it is their stage name. Uh, the body part that has been injured and then how the injury occurred. If you look in the upper right hand corner of the report, zoom in a little bit, uh, you will see that it has the show title, the theater, company, uh, the stage manager, of course, and then there's a little box beneath the date, <coughs> excuse me, um, that says no injuries or illness to report this week. Thankfully, I haven't had to do that. So whenever you submit it, if you don't have injuries, you still submit it, but you have to check that box so that they are aware that you do not have injuries or illnesses that week. So those are the two reports that I was primarily looking at, the injury report and the pre-production report. So Lizzie's gonna to talk to us a little bit about her reports, which uh, tend to be in some ways a little more unique because Lizzie's done a lot more one-man shows or one-person shows, I should say, uh, which uh, are a little different. Thanks, and apparently I have to pick on Lizzie Day about the uh, three-page reports. <laughs> I is. just wanna say the reason they're saying that is because um, I personally believe that your report shouldn't be formatting wise or just writing wise longer than two pages. Um, and I was telling them in our production meeting, I have a friend that a couple years ago, she posted on Facebook, I had a three and a half page report tonight because the show, her tech didn't go well. And yeah, of course that could happen every once in a while, but we try to not make that happen where the show is going nuts and something bad is happening and you're probably drinking a bottle of whatever alcohol of your choice is if you have a three and a half which I say go for it if you can drink alcohol after a three and a half page rehearsal a tech report whatever it is um but Would I also I interrupt for a second yes I'm sorry I forgot to say something one thing I noticed that I do differently than Taylor does <laughs> is that I don't include the daily call um what the current what the schedule is for that day and what the schedule is for the next day on my rehearsal reports that's a separate call that I do to the actors and the designers and directors. That's, that's just the way I was taught. It's just it's totally different paperwork. That's actually a good segue for me because what I was going to say is I do, and I'll, I'll screen share a couple of, I, th I think I can screen share on this, a couple of my documents. Um, I do, I don't put a full schedule necessarily, um, depending on the production of a daily call. I do make a separate daily call, but um, I, I do put the towards the end of my report for designers rehearsals from you know 10 to 5 tomorrow and then if they need a formal daily call they'll get that pdf attached like if there's a designer run or if they're just coming by for something so that they know when is an appropriate time for them to stop by um so like lisa said i have done over 20 solo shows um mostly in new york city one at the kennedy center um and sometimes on those shows your your tech can be also the first preview. Um, does it, it depends on how long your tech is. Some for some shows, just depending on the budget and the contract, they really don't want to give you more than a few hours. Some and you get like a paper tech and you go in and you're finished and then you're off to your fir first preview. Um, so I will combine that into one report. Uh, sometimes you have a couple tech days and I do my own tech report. Um, I know people that don't do tech reports, which I think that is not a good idea. Uh, you might, and the reason, I love the stage manager, and the reason they say they do is because everyone was in the room. That doesn't mean you remember everything that was said the day after, especially after a 10 out of 12. That's a very long day, a very draining, physical, emotional day. Um, and so I just try to make the most digestible, easy to read on a subway while you're going home on the subway on your iPhone as possible report. That's how I think of it. I'm always thinking someone is reading this on, oops, on the subway home on their iPhone. Um, so we want to make sure the formatting is easy. And I do attach 
the PDF, not just put the body of the email. Um, in case someone wants it and they need to print it out or they just prefer to read it on their desktop or tablet when they get home. Um, that's how I was taught um, at Williamstown. So let me share my report. Um, and for a lot of people don't realize you have to have good writing skills to be a stage manager. This is you penning the story of the day for the people who were in the room, who weren't in the room, um, of what happened and just the meat and potatoes. Um, and of course, if there's an injury, you put it in there, uh, depending on how many script changes there were that day, maybe I put it in there. Um, so I do also a script change form for the cast. And if it goes over three or four script changes that day, the designers will get that attached to their report as well. Um, so it just kind of depends on the production. So I think I can screen share. I've never done it on Zoom. This should work. All right, can you guys see that? Great. Great, it worked. Um, so this is an example of when I had a preview and a tech in the same day. So I just keep it simple, easy to read, just what needs to be in there. Um, the tech stuff, information, performance information, my little work accomplished of the day. And make sure you also include the house in your report for performances um, because they are a part of the experience, obviously. Whether it was 47 people or 3,000 people, or I think I did a solo show because it was a blizzard and three people were in the house and the actor was still grateful he had three people in that house, he'd still do it. No, yeah, it was, he was so happy and they were very engaged for the three people that came out in a blizzard <laughs> to see this great show. Um, and then I don't always put um, every department once we, see, even in rehearsal sometimes I don't put uh, every department. So yeah, costumes didn't have notes. I didn't give them a section. They logically know I would put it in there if they had a note. I don't, I don't have to write no notes, thank you. They're just gonna, Scroll, scroll through it usually and see if they see costumes, if we're flighting, they don't need it, done. Um, and then I keep that little schedule there, you know. It is two pages, but that's what happens when you combine those two types of that type of day. Um, I have another one. And then this is just um, my, which looks similar to, um, my performance report, my tech report, uh, same show, because we did have a couple of tech days for this. Um, just the schedule, the tech, there were notes. I sometimes, my own personal thing, I write happy tech or happy opening, or I even write happy closing because people think it's cute. So, and sometimes I don't do a closing report. Uh, it depends on the show. I think I've, for a couple of shows, I might have not done closing, but I, I tend to just kind of wrap it up um, if, it, if I feel like the show likes it or people just kind of like that last acknowledgement. Um, and then I throw a schedule and also depending, because I do so many one person shows, I don't always do a daily call. Um, so the playwright who is also the actor usually, or the performer, they don't want a daily call. And given it's a smaller team usually, so just like just throw it in the rehearsal report if we even have a rehearsal report. Some solo shows I don't do a report. I of course ask if they want one. They usually say they don't. I ask if they daily call. I said, well, we should probably have a schedule in some format. Basic email. Basic email to everyone. Doesn't have to be fancy. If there is a logo, I throw it on there. Those shows just happen to not have logos. So I just put a color. Um from what the show's poster had, it was pink. Also, High Hitler is a comedy. It's funny, it's not offensive. Um, it has to do with a woman that grew up in Germany. It's very funny, not offensive at all. I just wanna make sure, because some, some people see the name and they're like, huh? It's very, very funny, um, very liberal show. Um, and just make sure you read over your paperwork. I mean, obviously typos happen. I, I make typos every once in a while but be careful, proofread it. Um, and I also tailor certain sections of my reports depending on 
the, the certain person. So if I know a sound designer is going to read a note differently than the lighting designer, even though they might be getting the same note, I tend to potentially write it differently because of how they will process it. Um, and it might take a little extra, like a few seconds to word it differently, but in the long run, it'll make it a smoother process for your project. Uh, that's just my little polish of my reports and my, my stage management style. Um, what was, I had another note here. Also, if you have a two show day, um, write two separate performance reports. Um, I've seen stage managers do one and I, I, I feel it's unprofessional. There were two separate shows, two different audiences, uh, two different energies, um, two different times a day. So make the, you know, do it on your dinner break, send that first one out, then you do your second show and you do it after. I also write my notes on a notepad. I don't like having my laptop out with my report while I'm calling the show. Uh, usually the calling stage manager is the one that does the performance report once the show starts, uh, off Broadway at least. On Broadway, it, it changes. But um, just be careful about that. Um, <clears throat> because you might get distracted having your laptop out. I know it's a personal preference and some people prefer it. I just don't like having that many screens in front of me. It's distracting. If there's a, you know, if someone laughs at a specific line that night and you think it's good to put it in the script, um, uh, excuse me, not the script, the, uh, the report, um, circle it in your script and refer back to it and then write it down in your notes. Just, uh, it keeps it cleaner in my opinion. Um, again, I can't tell people how to do reports. It's just how I do it. But I learned how to do reports from a Broadway stage manager. My templates are not theirs, but very similar. So it works. I go, I've been using it for seven or eight years. So I like it. Um, it hasn't really changed very much in those seven or eight years. Um, and for readings, I don't always do reports. Um, like I said, I asked the producer or for one day projects if they want them. Um, and just be confident asking, don't do all that work if no one's gonna read your paperwork. Um, but yeah, it's, you just have to have a confident voice and feel it out and feel out the room and the personalities you're working with. And now we're gonna turn it to Ingrid to talk about her paperwork. So I recently have been doing, well, most of the time, musicals as well as touring which has slightly different for me looking at reports it also can be used legally as well with productions it's rare at least in my experience but in other experiences i've been told that they could be subpoenaed so for example um keeping track of certain things that happen in the day helps and you'll see that reflected in the two different I had two very different examples of types of paperwork I use. I would love to use anyone's, if a company has their templates, great. I don't have to worry about filling it out. I have ones that I constantly tinker with and have generally with my report and rehearsal ones taken from past stage managers that I really admire and that made sense their format but of course, customizing it based on the show and of course, asking their permission to use it. And generally, I don't have a problem with that. If they don't want me to, I don't, but I'll also reference where I got it from if anyone asks. So first one I'm going to show is a musical rehearsal report, which for me really isn't all that different in terms of number of things on it. Screen share. So here's my rehearsal report. I did redact names because I do like to keep privacy, um, full names and other names. So you will see some out there. For me, a big part of the job is discretion, especially talking about afterwards. So unless they're giving their consent, I'm not going to get their names. Um, but for me, it's like a basic overview of what we've done in the day. So we have an idea of progress, especially if there's a question of, hey, how can we do this better in the future? Or 
how much time did it take us to do certain things to judge later? Um, this one is actually from a tech rehearsal because it tends to have, it showed a little bit with music and choreography. I do customize based on each show what sections I have. That, so I have less of a grid system or like a block there. I just have sections that I can go down. So with this choreography and music, both our music director and choreographer left a little bit sooner before the entire production meeting was done. So I, of course, have notes in there detailed so that they know what questions came up or what questions are probably coming their way so they have a heads up. Sometimes I'll follow up with some of this with text if they want. Both of these individuals knew that they could text me a lot. In fact, one of my main forms of communication with the music director often would be texting because of our commutes each day. Um, with, we have production meetings after every tech. So I would knock down, mark down just the basics of like what we said needs to be done so that we know you can easily look back and be like, okay, what did we talk about? Where do we land on that? Great, you can reference this and know what the punch list is. Cool, it just reinforces it and that's why we're clear. Obviously props we had a lot of. I went on to two pages with this. Um, for me, injuries would, or anything like that goes under production management admin facilities um, because that tends to be an admin section. Um, lateness goes under miscellaneous for me. And I reference why in case with an instance like this, it was an illness. That person was in contact with me actually even before I woke up that day. I remember this one. So we knew exactly what was going on. We could track it through this tech process because there was a lot going on due to the season of the year. It was January. Uh, if it's things like specific lighting notes, like, okay, you're going to make fixes. Great. That's all I need to know. But if it references another department, I may put it in one section and be, and so it would say something in scenic, then something in lighting, but at the end of the line notes, I also reference in scenic, and the scenic session also reference in lighting. That way, it's there. If I'm feeling a little bit like I don't want to do that cut and paste, I will say see lighting, and I have seen other stage managers do that. Um, for me, performances are pretty similar. Um, I, I also believe in putting in the house counts, especially for those creatives who aren't around as much and don't get the house reports. I've been at theaters where I do as a stage manager get a house report, but not everyone does. So this format has that. Breakdown Act 1, intermission. I like to use seconds because if you put 52 one day, 52 the other, there is a slight difference, especially with musicals or operas. That second could be vital. Comedies do, because comedy beats change a lot. Um, with performance notes, um, I choose to put like things that affect the performance, cueing, if it's a technical element that kind of affects how the beat went a little bit of things that I notice if they're major issues with safety in choreography or the flow of music. Um, sometimes it's it's tiny or it hasn't happened that much. I'll just tell the dance captain who is great on the show or the music director personally, but sometimes if I can't get in touch with them, it goes in the performance section if it seems to particularly affect a moment. I will give a basic summary of the show and like reactions so they get a sense of what the performance is like. Oh, was that unexpected? Is was this pretty typical? Um, the show, we happened to be sharing the stage. So we were dealing with a little bit of that. So we were constantly in communication with admin about how that was affected and how we can fine tune the sharing of the stage and things to be aware of. Accidents, injuries, in performance has its own section, as does the lates and subs have its own section. Um, so the other thing that I had, 
I've done quite a bit of is touring with a company called TheaterWorks USA, a lot of TYA productions. With this, um, while I also prefer having a separate performance report for each performance, like Lizzie said, even if that makes it kind of interesting on two performance days. With this one, um, the company had their very own specific format, so we would put multiple performances on the same day. So here is this template, um, obviously created by the company with what they need. It evolved over the three tours I did there, um, but basic what shows were, what show you're doing, where are you, what day is it, and we specially tracked breaks because our schedule could be so demanding and we, we equity was a lot more on top of us when it came to conditions because it was so demanding. So we wanted to make that very clear administratively, like where a day broke down. So there was quite a bit of redundancy in a lot of the paperwork to make it kind of easy because if you put it on one day and then with a later report, you can just reference that report to finish up other paperwork. So as you can see, this is a one performance day. Sometimes there are tours that would go have three forms a day. I never did that. Um, but they have the option here so you can write all that down. We're of course loading in, traveling, we have our breaks. Um, they of course have a section for lateness because lateness would be an issue, um, especially chronically if you're more for leaving from New York for local stops. Um, but sometimes also when we're out on the road, it could get to be an issue and we want to address that sooner rather than later. Accents, injuries, and well, the redundancy of when that report got to the office. Um, we would use not only the equity injury report weekly, but also a specific report for the company to get that in as soon as possible. So again, we had that paperwork and that got to be vital, like these accident injury reports and sections with dealing with workers' comp, like how specific you got, whether workers' comp happened. And I had, I've had had to deal with that. And it was a question of specifics of whether this person would get workers' comp or not by the intention of when something happened, because it involves a vehicle door. Um, that was an interesting day. You see here, our performance section is that much. You hit highlights times when it's they were less engaged because these tours these shows went out for multiple tours um different companies that kind of helped have an idea of like what was succeeding what was not depending on the audience so performance notes costumes was big with us props were big with us um traveling and breaks noting like when we ran into issues when we ran into traffic like we're dealing with vehicles. Tickets were a big thing right here. We hit a ticket issue between what the theater told us and what the police was enforcing. So being able to document that was extremely important for us. So if anything came up, we knew we had right then when it happened, like the details and could reference back to that. Um, over time, again, we document it there so it's easy to pull that report back and do the overtime report at the end of the week if needed. Uh, we do a lot of votes through the day because this was an A production as well of shortening breaks, um, going off the clocks overtime was out the window and being able to document that. We also have space of, because we could give feedback on the hotels we stayed in and if they would be stayed in in the future or if they should be taken off the list. Um, another thing, venues. So you have, you can give as much information as possible to the next stage manager and hopefully that makes everything easier, especially if you're in a school. This was an amazing venue, um, an IOTC venue. So being able to give a heads up of that and is crucial and just where you're going. So as you can see, this is much detailed. It is two full pages. I would sometimes get onto three besides my signature, um, depending if there's a lot going on. 
And in that same vein, I'm going to show one other one. Being a touring stage manager where you were the main admin, production person, company manager on the road with them. We had our support back home with a company manager on call 24 seven. But when you're the main one responsible, you're doing a lot of paperwork and tracking a lot. So this was our one of our travel days. This was from my first tour, so it evolved. But at the same time, we're still tracking breaks. When we stopped, like how long we went, if we ran into particular issues with travel, maybe referencing where good stops were for future stage managers. Here you see an off the clock vote, which meant that overtime went out of the way because we would leave at a specific time. Um, and also a very documented injury issue that ended up affecting us later down the road because we went into a situation called emergency understudy. So hitting the piece of all that and how, where that performer was and how taken care of she was. So I get kind of technical with all of those. I will save the overtime report and the um, emergency understudy report unless someone really wants to see that. Um, Ingrid, I have a question. Is that something you have to sign it? Is that a theater works thing or do you sign all your reports? Uh, that's only for theater works. They have a section that does that. I guess kind of makes it official. I would, I would just kind of have that as part of my <coughs> template. So I set mine up from the beginning with that, with my show title and all that and my name and have it signed from the beginning. Because sometimes with these shows, theater or the stage managers do change through the tour. So it kind of helps. It's probably a little bit of legality there, um, but I did not run into too much issue. Otherwise I've never signed for report. <coughs> oh, so, okay, you don't do it for other projects. Uh, it's, it's only for that company. I assumed, yeah, it was because if you were on tour that it was a reality <laughs> issue. That's why you signed it. Uh, yeah, no, I we, think it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, we ran into, again, theater works, a lot of legality, a lot of following by the book, quite <laughs> specifically, and it has affected how I view reports as being a very legal business document. Yes, you can put your own spin to it and give the mood of the room, but there is some nuts and bolts that you do need in there. Well, I like it. I'm very much, I like to follow the rules in the book. So I actually might start doing that on my own reports, putting my signature, which is also going to lead me to the next thing I left out um, when I was talking. Um, I write my reports and I noticed Ingrid did it too in third person. Um, I don't write I, I write Lizzie or Elizabeth um, because on, if you're a stage management team, the PSM is not always the one writing the reports. Sometimes the ASM will do it or a PA will do it. It just depends on your duties for that production. Um, so I think writing in third person on reports, not I, is always a little cleaner and a more professional approach. Um, something I also wanted to add was sometimes notes don't always get acknowledged by designers, it happens, or producers. Leave the note in for you know a couple more reports in. If you're texting or emailing and it still hasn't been, you know acknowledged, you have to figure out you know plan B or C at that point. But um, it's okay to keep a note in for designer if it hasn't been acknowledged for report two, or three. If it's the same note over and over again, because um, you want to make sure it does get acknowledged yeah. uh, before tech or when you if you need a prop or whatever. Actually, on that, um, leaving it in. Uh, reports I will do the same too if it hasn't been acknowledged or um, you know changed or gotten rid of um, I'll also start to highlight it if yeah, it's done that too. third yeah. fourth time that it's in there um, and that's also if I can't contact the person for some reason otherwise because sometimes that that remedies itself that way um, but yeah, specifically if it's if if it hasn't been addressed past a second or third time, I'm gonna start calling it out a bit more. Yeah, or an asterisk. I've done that. Yeah, too. it helps um, the production manager notice it too. So hopefully they can back you up as well. The one production director. managers who do that. Yeah. And also, um, don't do bullets. Don't do letters. Do numbers when you are writing your notes out because they're really referring to note three. Agree to disagree there. 
I oh. choose not to. Oh, okay. You do bullets or letters. I will do that. That way, if I'm deleting and going back, I know there's auto numbering, but I just prefer the layout of the bullet. Okay. That's your own spin on it. That's fine. Um, I have, I've also done, I guess if it's part of a note, I'll do like 3A. It's rare when I have to do that, depending on the show, but I have done that um, just for people's piece of uh, little bandwidth. Um, and you don't need to screw around with the fonts or the colors. Keep it black and white. If there is a logo or you want to make the header a color like I did, if there's no logo and you want to choose a color from the show to make pop out, that's fine. But don't splash a bunch of stuff on there. Black and white. If you, know, if you need to highlight it or put something red if it's kind of pertinent, that's fine. But... <laughs> If someone was saying something. Keep it easy to read. Don't keep it sim yeah, kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Reading. Easy, yeah. Easy to digest. Reading it on the subway home. Make it as easy for yourself and everyone else as possible. Also, and this is for your safety and the production safety, right? Subject to change on every single piece of paperwork you have. Daily call, report, script changes, prop list, whatever you are creating. Make sure your contact information is on there meaning your email and your cell phone number, you don't need more than that. Your name, your cell phone number, uh, your email address, subject to change because then people cannot fight you. Oh, wait, that's subject to change. Yeah, it said on our original schedule, this was happening. It said on that report, this was happening. It changes. That, that's life, right? That's, that's, that's theater. Um, I do agree with that, especially with wording, um, being definite in the verbiage is something that I try to avoid be acknowledging that. And that's to go with your point, Lizzie, of it is writing skills. So something at this moment, currently, we may, that set of phrasing is valuable to me as well. Yeah, it's writing skills are so crucial to stage management. I mean, I, I actually did, the only New York friend show I've ever done uh, the, the show is about storytelling in a way. And he thought how I would write my little, you know, house and performance report notes, my rehearsal notes as a story. He's like, oh, I thought you did that for the show because it's about storytelling. I'm like, no, I do that for all my shows because I am telling a story of the day. I want it to be beginning to end, very easy to digest. Also, in this depends on the production, obviously. Electrics and lighting can be two different departments, usually are, so they get two different sections of notes. Props and set can be two different people. Sometimes, especially in like one person shows, it's the same person and they don't mind if you combine it, obviously, for their own personal bandwidth and just to make your report shorter. Ask, it's usually fine. I've never run into an issue where someone's like, oh, it has to be two separate sections. But just keep all that in mind, um, electric lights, costumes, wardrobe, all different, different um, responsibilities, different departments, similar, but different. Yeah, like Ingrid said, you can have, depending on the show you're doing, you can change the title of those different sections. So, you know, if you don't have a fight choreographer, for example, you would take that out. You know, if you yeah, have you a composer, you put that in. So that's always, you know, your temp, you may have a basic template, but you're always going to be making changes that are specific to each show. Right. Like if you're doing a play, you may not have, you're not a music director in there. Yeah. I mean, I do very few musicals, so I rarely write the word composer or librettist. The, sh the show I did earlier this year was a play, but the playwright hired a composer to compose themes for the, each of the characters that were underscoring in the show and pre-show and post-show. Right. Also, yeah. also, something else, sometimes people will not want to be acknowledged in reports. So, uh, I don't, I don't mean, you know, fight choreography, for example, because they're not always in the room. Um, whereas like lighting will have, well, not necessarily little tech, but maybe a sound designer will have notes throughout if you have a heavy sound show. Um, they, the fight choreographer might ask for you to not put them in the report and just not write no notes, thank you. I mean, if you have a note for them, then they'll look for it. 
or maybe you'll have to give them the email heads up because they might not check those emails regularly unless they have to come in for something. Um, but that's also tailored to how the process is going. Uh, I've worked with a, sorry? Do you view that as uh, across the board or specifically rehearsal or performance? Um, I'm just curious, especially with bike choreography. Yeah. What do you mean, like keeping them in the report? Um, have, like having their own section versus not. Um, I, I, if they, if they haven't asked me to take them out, I keep their own section and will write no notes, thank you, unless they have a note. But it also depends. I, I've worked with two fight choreographers. Who are like, you know what? Unless you have a note, can you just not put my section in? And once I get to, so sorry about these dings. Um, once I get to um, tech and previews, uh, I just put in the departments like I showed of who needs it. So if lighting and sound, but if prop doesn't need one, they're not in there because it's just, at that point, you're just pushing ahead and drilling and just putting in exactly what you need. It, it depends for me on every show. Um, some people love having every single department in. That's their personal, maybe the company's asking for that. Maybe that's their personal choice. Um, I just, I try to streamline it as best as I can and just try to make people happy. If someone personally says to me, I really don't want to see that in my name, my department in the report, it just adds to their stress. Okay. Um, I mean, unless someone, the producer has a problem with it, which I've never worked with a producer that had an issue with my template or how I've, how I've staggered each department. Um, I just take it out if that is going to make the process easier. I will um, say, um, I want to open it to um, questions and such, but before I do, I will say that because I've worked on the other side as a prop designer, um, I like having my, you know, department in there and <laughs> a great day is seeing none, thank you. <laughs> Completely agree as somebody who's worked as a design, costume designer. Yeah. Very rare. <laughs> <laughs> that it happens or even just seeing like a singular line that's nice that is not a huge process for me um yeah because i i it's nice <laughs> well the other thing about it is like you know i hope most people can use common sense in that if they only see sound lights and props have notes but costumes and producer and electric that it's common sense of like, yeah, we didn't have a note, so she's not going to write no notes today. Thank you. So, you know, we're professionals, we're adults. You know, I can hold your hand for a bit, but I'm not going to hold it the whole time. So, yeah. um, so up to uh, questions and comments, if anyone has them. Turn your cameras on if you want. Yeah, or you can uh, put it in the chat and we'll, we'll read it. Um, having said that, I, I've, I've been on some other, the other side of the report in the receiving <laughs> of it. I will say that, um, it helps to, I've had stage managers that have not necessarily, I guess, not duplicated the note for me. Um, and not just specifically, <laughs> but the other departments as well, where, um, I, I, I like to put in my own reports, you know, uh, if there's something that sound and, and scenic needs. Um, if I'm not actually putting the, the full note itself, I'll say, you know, sound C scenic for their note or something like that. Um, just so that they know that there's something that coexists for them, it helps. Um, and having been, again, on the receiving end of, of the, um, the notes, it helps that person too. It helps the designer, I think. Um, I'm also the designer that sometimes works on shows and will judge the other stage manager of court when I'm like, this is not easy to read. And then they find out I'm a stage manager. I'm like, I know that could have been written way differently. <laughs> um, opinion question. If for example, you receive a lot of stuff do you like a lot of props come in or a particular item you've been asking for? Do you, how often, if ever, do you acknowledge that and like, thank you for this or this was delivered? Especially if it's like, oh, it's being mailed and the designer's not the one dropping it off. Gotcha. Um, I like to, I, I, 
we like to add that because you know so often you're asking of this person whichever designer it may be so it's kind of nice to just say thank you we got it like just a, a quick thank you it's just nice yeah um it's a, yeah i do that too but kind of i agree yeah um politeness goes a long way it does yeah because I've also had, um, it wasn't in the notes because it, or uh, in the report rather, because it was a director. So it wasn't from the stage manager specifically where um, they just weren't nice. Like they just weren't a nice person really. Um, and there wasn't a whole lot of thank yous. It was a lot of, it, it was a lot of things that I need kind of um, that, they, it was it was a it was a row of dominoes basically that just if one thing didn't happen then the next one will <laughs> go into place um and it was waiting on a specific thing that we needed before the rest of everything else could be put together um because i'm also not about moving things or, or repetitiveness too much as far as um setting something up and having to take it back down and move it to 5,000 different places. I'd like to have it set. Um, obviously, yeah, you, it's, a show is different. You're, you go through your show and then you have to re-prep everything, but you know where that stuff is going. You, you should know if you've done the paperwork. Um, and this was something where it, it was, it was a, a set design um, or a set dressing that needed to happen. It was not, imperative to the show itself there was no action happening with it it was just a look um and we needed we were waiting on wallpaper and it was a huge to do um believe it or not and on top of that wallpaper was going they were going to be pictures um because it was a living room and, and the wallpaper wasn't there because electrics in that wall needed to be moved from the outside of the wall to the inside of it anyway um and then the designer could <laughs> not deciding on which wallpaper they wanted and i wasn't going to put pictures up that i had to staple up to the wall to have to take them back down and ruin part of it to have to put it back up again it it didn't add to anybody's action whatsoever um and that became sort of a bone <laughs> tension but it, it, it take, but once things are done and, and the set is set, um, you know, just a, 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 a thank you is, <laughs> goes a long way. <laughs> it even brings up an interesting point. And I think for me, and I'm always very proud of saying I'm from the South and I have no hesitation of using my Southern manners and Southern charm, as I put it. Um, I, I do try to not only say thank you in reports, but I also try to frame what I say positively because I think <laughs> that makes a difference. You know, the, the old adage, you'll catch more bees with honey. Um, and I, I just, that's my personal approach. Um, and, and that's not just in the rehearsal room, but in a report too, because I think, I mean, there are ways that you can phrase it that might come off as offensive to someone or make a designer defensive. And you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you're getting, the best work out of everyone to tell the best story you can. Uh, and I'm a firm believer that everyone contributes to telling that story. So I think if you can frame it in, in a positive light, that's going to get you further faster. Yeah, always frame it as positive. That's a very good point. I probably we can. And the more you thank people and the more positive you are, they will bake for you. I have gotten lots of treats. I will say, yep. yeah, I will say, um, of course, be positive. I try as best, but something I'm learning even now, don't minimize the needs of the room yeah. in order to be positive. Don't yeah. try. Yeah. Being passive aggressive is never going to help anyone if you have to be <coughs> firm and it's a more in-depth conversation. Right. Maybe take it to email or in person where right. those conversations are better and which kind of goes along probably with the status of the notes. Yeah. I will repeat it or emphasize if we really need an answer. Right. And you know, Liz, going back to what Lizzie said about, you know, Lizzie takes notes on in a notebook and then puts them into the report. I do the same thing. Me too. Uh, and so when we have an instance where something might not be so positive, then it's a very factual 
clean inform bit of information in the actual report that that is going to go out but what my handwritten notes are and i will even go back and add to my handwritten notes are much more detailed so that i have that information and then i will do yeah a separate in person or an email particularly if there's a need for a written trail that email i think is essential too so sometimes those things don't necessarily go into a report that everyone's going to see it because it has to be more an individualized approach yeah and that, the reason i'm such a big advocate of writing it down and not doing it as you go is because I just don't think they're as polished. I can always tell, you know, whether I'm seeing someone do it on their computer or I'm in the room or not. It's always, I like to sit down and digest the day. I need time. It, it could have been the best show. There could have not been one mistake happening, right? That's what you aim, aim for, the perfect show. But I still want to digest and think about what happened and not just do it as I go. And I can always tell when, if I'm reading it on my phone, if I'm the designer or programmer on that show, if they were doing it while the show was going or not, because things can get left out. So yeah, yeah we don't want to kill trees, but I mean, sometimes it just makes it a little more professional to kill some trees. And that's not to say that there are not things that you can't do ahead of time on your report yeah, like what course. performance is it or you know what's the call what are the call times and those those things you can go ahead and, and put in but i just <laughs> lizzie I, I need some time to digest what i'm what has happened and find the best way to write it so that it is clear um and in the best light especially um, when you have sort of a, a <laughs> issue maybe um you got to figure out a way to finesse Things, so you don't you I'm kind of learning now that I need to not it's not you don't need a knee-jerk reaction or you don't want a knee -jerk <laughs> action. Um, we do have a question um, in the chat of how do you check or monitor ongoing notes for specific departments do you carry the notes over or do you include info on the status of the note um, I'll, I'll carry the note over if I need to um, and Again, if I have to keep carrying it over, it will get highlighted eventually or somehow made more bold. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'll sometimes contact the person. If, if, if it's a pressing issue, especially, um, I'll contact the person and ask them how it's going, either email, text, phone call. Yeah, so. I do the same thing. And yeah, if I don't hear, if I don't get a response back from the designer, I will usually then send them a, a, a text message or call them and say, hey, I, there was a note about this in the report yesterday or two days ago and I, I haven't gotten a response. I'm just making sure you got that report because sometimes they may not have checked their email or their email might not have gotten it or they're having technical issues. So you kind of want to use another source. Um, and I do, if, you know, if it's, it's a request, we need this specific prop for rehearsal three days from now and the prop comes in, again, going back to politeness, I will usually put in the report, thank you for, for that prop. I mean, and sometimes people are unfortunately flaky and don't make the effort like you do. You put the whole report out, you do all this and they don't want to read it. And yeah, it's rude and unprofessional, but our, um, our biggest part of our job is communication. So you, yeah, you have to just figure out how to communicate with that specific person because that designer is going to be different from the last designer you worked with and it's just that's just the reality of this business and just life you're gonna just deal with different personalities i say it all the time it's an industry of personalities in psychology theater is a, like the last kind of part of it in a way yeah um and that kind of brings us to the end of our time actually so that was a that was a good wrap up yeah oh wow that really flew by when you said that taylor i was like we're done <laughs> it's because we're talking about reports and there are <laughs> lots of things to do um, I, love, I love writing reports i think we all do i think that's a it's one of my, thing i mean i'm a writer so i love writing but i happen to really love writing on the reports i don't like writing reports <laughs> well, to each her own that's this right. is why i like being a backstage manager no reports right
Yeah. Or are they yeah. having the opposite? For me, I've always been a production stage manager. It's rare for me to just sim- to be backstage and not yeah, have to yeah. do reports. Yeah, so. it's very rare when I'm deck stage manager. Yeah. I, yeah, uh, very rare. I'll take my own notes as as a deck stage manager too. Just yeah, to, uh, yeah. Just, but yeah. Give me the, the math. Report, give me the organization. <laughs> you can keep the reports, <laughs> please. Um, yeah. Thanks oh, for joining okay. us. Thank, Thank you. you.